Uh, we're interviewing Mr. Gerald A. Schaefer uh, in um, Niagara Falls, New York. It is October 31st, 31st. 2001. Michael Akey, interviewer. Wayne Clark, uh, videographer. Mr. Schaefer, where were you born? Dubois, Pennsylvania. Oh, where's, whereabouts is Dubois? Well, it's about 90 miles yeah. Northeast of uh, Northeast of uh, Pittsburgh. Okay. All right. And you went to uh, you grew up in uh, New Boys? Yes. Okay. Went to school in New Boys? No. No. I went to school in Luthersburg, Pennsylvania. Oh, that was nearby? Yes. Okay. Did you get through high school there? No. No. Um Where'd you go to high school? I went to high school there, yes. Okay. But I quit high school in 11th grade and I went into the CCC camp. Oh, really? In Pennsylvania? No. Well, that's where I enlisted. Okay. But they sent me out to Washington, the state of Washington. Oh. What'd you do in the CCC? Oh, we built uh, flood control dams. Mm-hmm. Planted trees. Mm-hmm. Soil conservation. Did you like the experience? Yes, I did, very much. Mm -hmm. You like being outdoors? Yes. Why did you join the CCC? I can't give you an answer to that. It's okay. Don't have to. And uh, how long were you in the CCC? Nine months. Nine months. And um, what did you do after your tour with the CCC? Well, I come back to Dubois, and then I come up to Niagara Falls. Okay. And I went to work and I shredded wheat in Niagara Falls. Okay. Because I was 17, I couldn't get a job anyplace else. Oh. You had to be 18 to get in the factories here. Okay. But you could get in uh, shredded wheat at 17? Yeah, I worked at shredded wheat for two years. Okay. And um, were you in shredded wheat when the um, Pearl Harbor was attacked? Yes. Do you remember where you were when you heard about that? Yeah, I was in Kane, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. I was traveling on a bus from Dubois to Niagara Falls and when I heard about it. Do you have any recollection of what you thought? I thought, damn, I'll be in it. Well. I just the right age, I, I knew I was going to get into it. Mm -hmm. And. Um, did you decide, decide to enlist or were you drafted? I was drafted. Okay. And uh, where did you um, go into the service? In Buffalo? No. I left from Dubois on train, went down to Indian Town Gap, Pennsylvania. Okay. And that's where I got my indoctrination or went into the service. Okay. And, um, so where did you take your basic training? Camp Swift, Texas. Camp Swift, Texas. What was that like? A lot different than uh, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Did you like Texas? Was, yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. It was hot and dry. The uh, basic training went pretty well for you? Yes. Um, and after basic, uh, where did you go? We went to Louisiana and took advanced training okay. and jungle training. All right. Were you part of the Louisiana maneuvers? Yes. Okay. What was that like? Well, it wasn't too bad. But again, that wasn't like Pennsylvania. No. How'd you like the people? I really didn't get acquainted with too many people there. Okay. Okay. Um, the... Um, the training at uh, Louisiana was that uh, was that pretty rough? Yes, it was. Okay. What did you did you learn anything during that training? Oh yes. Okay. Did, did it help you later on? Mm -hmm. It was jungle training. It was jungle training. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how did you have any idea how long that may have lasted? Oh, we must have been there about three, four months. Uh, what unit were you? Were you in a unit at that point? Yes. 
I was in the 97th Infantry Division. Okay. And I'd dearly like to know where they went after I left them. I never knew. Well, I tell you what. We'll find out and tell you. Okay. 97th Infantry. That's easy enough to do. Um, so you trained with the 97th for a while? Yes. Okay. And well, I started in Texas with the 97th. Okay. And then we went to the Louisiana. Mm-hmm. And then we was detached from there. Okay, you were detached in Louisiana? No. We went up to uh, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Okay. And that's where we, we was detached. Okay. And about how many people were detached, do you remember? Small group? Yes, I would say 50. Okay. Um, what was, Did you have any specialized training at that point? Is that why you were detached? or? Well, I, I took radio training in Texas. Okay. I learned international Morse code. Oh, that wasn't easy to learn, was it? No. You still remember any of it? Oh, yes, I don't remember all of it. <laughs> I'm not sure how useful it is now, but... Um, you, took, uh, you, you took your training at uh, Fort Leonard Wood. Uh, was that more intensive uh, radio training? Yes. Okay. Were you part of a unit at that point? Well, that was still the 97th still Infantry 97th. Division. Okay. And what happened after your training? Well, they took some of us and sent us east. Did you know where you were going? Not at that time. Okay. Where did you end up? Virginia. Okay. And what, uh, what were you doing in Virginia? wasn't doing anything. We'd just stand there until we got a ship to go overseas. Oh. At that time, we found out we was going to Burma. Okay. What did you think about that? Well, I knew I was going to go somewhere, so it didn't make any much difference. Oh, that's a good attitude. And um, were you assigned to a unit prior to going to Burma? I think they called it the 7,007th detachment unit. Okay. And this was a communications unit? No. We were supposed to go into Burma and relieve the Mar Merrill's Marauders. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, did you get any specialized training for going into Burma? No. No? All right. And um, how did you get to Burma? Was it by ship, airplane? Well, we went to Calcutta by ship. Okay. What was? Oh, that must have been a long trip. It was. Then we went from Cal. Uh, I'm sorry. Went to Bombay. Okay. And then we got on a train and went across India on the train and went to Calcutta. Hmm. Must have been a whole different world for you. Oh, it was. What uh, What kind of things went through your mind as you're traveling across India? Any things, anything that made certain impressions on you? I just remember how many people there was. Lots of people. Interesting. And uh, what was your eventual destination? Burma. Burma. Whereabouts in Burma? Uh, Michina. Okay, what was that like when you got there? Well, we went to, first we went to a town by the name of Ramgar. Okay. And then we flew into India. Oh. And we landed at Michina. Okay. What um, what type of housing did you have there? Tents. It was tents. And um, what was your job there? I was always in communication. Always communications. Uh, radio operator. Yes. Okay. And. Um, what type of uh, operations were going on in that area? Well, there was a lot of fighting there when I was there. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. um, Japanese were very active in that area? Yes. Merrill's Marauders had come in there and took uh, Michina, okay. the city Michina. Mm -hmm. And then the Japanese came in and took it back. Oh. So things were touch and go for a while. It was. So what was living like in the tents in the jungle? Wet. Wet. Mm -hmm. The uh, 
I bet you never seem to be able to dry out. No. I think more people got killed by disease than they did by the Japanese. I wouldn't be surprised. Did you get sick at all? I got malaria. Mm -hmm. um, so what did you do on a daily basis? What type of activities? It was mostly marching. Mostly marching? Mm -hmm. When I went in there, they gave me 13 mules and a communication platoon. Oh. Now, are you a sergeant at that point? Yes. Okay. Thirteen mules in a communications platoon. Mm -hmm. What was your job? What was the platoon's job? Well, we kept in touch with Karachi, oh. which was the main headquarters at that time. Okay. And uh, did you have to move around because of Japanese activity, or were you able to... Yes. You did? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're moving a lot. Mm -hmm. We was in a little camp there, they called it. Camp Lewis. Mm -hmm. I understand the first man that killed was killed in Burma. Was, his name was Lewis. Okay. And uh, they called it Camp Lewis. What? Uh, who is your commanding officer? Merrill Marauder. That. Oh, at that Merrill time. At that time. Okay. Your. Um, who was your company captain? Do you remember? Hunter. What kind of guy was he? Pretty nice guy. Your officers were pretty good. Yeah, they weren't bad. Uh, how was it dealing with the natives? We didn't have too much to do with them. You didn't? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so your main job was to maintain the communications with, was it Karachi? Yes. Okay. Were you able to be, do that pretty successfully? Yes. Now, um, these weren't landlines. No, radio. Radio. Okay. How was the equipment? Wasn't bad. Pretty good equipment? Mm -hmm. uh, did it hold up in that kind of environment? Yes. We never had any trouble with it. Okay. Didn't take a lot of maintenance? No. How was handling mules? You ever Tough. Huh. What's the hardest thing about a mule? Well, I had 13 mules and one of them was really bad. Mm -hmm. It was a black mule. And he gave me all kinds of trouble. <laughs> Every morning when you tried to put the saddle on him, he tried to, tried to kick you with any foot he could. Oh dear. And if you couldn't do that, he tried to bite you. So you're able to deal with him though? Oh yes. We took care of him. <laughs> um, we used to twist his ear and put a, bite, his tongue, bite his ear with our teeth. And then he'd, he'd stand perfectly still while we did that. Then we could put the saddle on him. Uh, who, who figured that out? I guess I did. <laughs> so you were the head mule skinner? Yes. Oh. The, um, now, how long were you at, at this place? In Burma? Yes. I must have been in there a year and a half. A year and a half? Mm-hmm. Um, were you able to get any mail from home? Oh, yes. About how long did it take a letter to get from uh, the States to you? Do you have any idea? No. No? The, um, how was the morale in your unit? Pretty low. Pretty low? Why is that? Because so much sickness, I think. Okay. And the wet? And it was wet and miserable. It's not very good living conditions? No. Hmm. Let me stop this for a second. What else did you do? Well, whenever we'd come to rice paddy, there was paths around the rice paddies, and uh, he would slip and he'd go down into the rice paddy, mm -hmm. and then he wouldn't get up. You couldn't get him back up again. And uh, one day I took my canteen cup mm -hmm. and I got some water out of the rice paddy, and I cupped his ear up like a funnel and I poured the water in his ear. He come up there, he come up there, out of there like a rocket. <laughs> so you got pretty good at dealing with the mules. Oh yes. You had to improvise. Mm -hmm. There was no army manual on dealing with mules, was there? No. Then after that, I didn't even have to get any water when he fell. I'd just rattle my canteen and he knew <laughs> what I was up to. And he'd come right up out of the rice paddy. 
That's a great story. <laughs> um, and he was the only ornery mule that you had. Yes. Uh -huh. The rest of them was pretty well behaved. Uh -huh. And uh, you said uh, when you no longer needed the mules, they they basically did what to them? This was at the end of the war. Oh, okay. This is my understanding what happened to okay. them. I didn't see it. Okay. They took the mules all up in a canyon, and then they, the engineers went up in the side of the canyon and blasted dynamite and blew the sides of the walls down and covered them all up. Oh dear. And they said they couldn't bring them back to the United States. They had too many diseases. Right, right. Hmm. Now, um, you're in Burma for over a year. Yeah. Year and a half, I'd say. About a year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, did you ever have any contact with the Japanese? Oh yes. What uh, What was your main concern about them? I didn't want them to shoot me. <laughs> That's very reasonable. <laughs> um, you were with an infantry unit. Oh, yes. Okay, and they were they basically provided security for the communications? Yes. Okay. Um, did you often, were there any firefights? Oh, yes. Okay, so you were right on the front. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, what, what was your view of the Japanese infantrymen? I didn't think much of them. No? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now, your time in Burma, was that um, pretty much the extent of your tour? Or did you go somewhere else after Burma? Well, we went back into India. Oh, okay. Went to a camp by the name of Ramgar. And, uh, we were tra training Chinese troops there. Now, what were they like? <clears throat> Bad. Some of them was all right. They gave me two interpreters to go with me, and they said, "Stick with, go with them at all times." Mm -hmm. And uh, were the interpreters pretty? Were the, the interpreters were native Chinese? Yes. Okay, who spoke English? Yes. Were they pretty good guys? Well, they spoke very well. They went to Peking University at the oh. time. And uh, they could speak very well. But they couldn't understand American soldiers with the slang that the American soldiers used. Right. My interpreter told me, he says, I'll teach you to speak some Chinese if you tell me what this American slang is. <laughs> so you both taught each other? Yeah. Now, why did they want you to have these guys around all the time? So whatever I did, they could uh, tell the other Chinese what I was doing and okay. train them. Uh, what were the Chinese officers like? Well, they were mean to the soldiers. Really? Yes. A lot tougher than uh, you were used to seeing. Yes. Mm. Um, did the Chinese soldiers learn well, or was it... No. No. Um, I used to show them how to climb up a pole, mm -hmm. like an electric pole mm -hmm. with spikes, mm -hmm. and I'd tell them, "Now, whatever you do, don't lean in. Keep straight so you don't your spikes don't slip out." Mm -hmm. And they get up quite a ways, and all at once they would get scared or something, and they grab the pole and. Down they come. They didn't learn that lesson very well. No. <clears throat> now you were teaching them uh, communication skills. Yes. Okay. Um, so how long? About how long were you teaching these guys? Oh, I'd say six months. Six months. Mm -hmm. And at the end of six months, were they any better? No. No. Well, it must have been an adventure. Yes, it was. What were living conditions like there? 
was a little better. A little better? We was living in a house. Okay. A, a big compound. Mm-hmm. And um, food was okay? Yes. Very good. What kind of food were you eating? Well, we ate a lot of Chinese food. Mm -hmm. The um, now, after you were teaching the Chinese, what uh, what did you do? Let's see. Somehow, I wound up in China. When I was in uh, when I was in this mission, teaching them was right along the Shanghai River. Okay. Did you uh, mix with the uh, the Chinese population very much? Yes. What were they like? I liked them better. Mm-hmm. It was pretty nice. A lot of poverty? Oh, yes. Very poor. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them. Hmm. They treated you pretty well? Yes. Okay. I understand there's a billion people in China now. It's a lot of people. And pretty close to that in India. Mm-hmm. Now, when you, you ended up in China, what were you doing over in China? Training the Chinese, the same thing, yeah. Same thing? Mm -hmm. Okay. A little more advanced than we did in India. Okay. Uh, did you teach them Morse code and things like that? Yes. They better students? Yeah, they was good at that. Okay. Again, the officers were tough? Yes. And um, how long were you in China? Two years. I stayed there till the end of the war. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And basically teaching, uh, teaching the soldiers? Mm -hmm. uh, these were what, nationalist Chinese? Yes. Uh, Chiang Kai-shek? Yes. Okay. You know what they called him? What did they call him? The peanut. Why, why is that? I don't know. They called him the peanut. Mm -hmm. Probably not to his face. No. Uh, had you heard about the the communist Chinese at all? Yes. And uh, they was all, only thing they was interested in get all the material they could from the United States. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Do you have to worry about bandits? No. No. Now you were in China with your platoon, or just you and? With the platoon I was with. Okay. Okay. Um, same captain? Company captain? No. No. Different guy. Who was the um, platoon lieutenant? Remember him? No. No. So you're pretty much in charge. Yes. They give you a pre pretty free hand? Yes. So you ran your own ship? Mm -hmm. Then somehow we got, uh, it was a Colonel Hunter come in and was in charge. Mm -hmm. And we walked from uh, Michina down to Lido. How far was that? Around 700 miles. You walked? Well, not in one day. What? <laughs> that must have been quite a walk. It was through the mountains. Really? There was Japanese north in uh, Burma at that time trying to go into India. Mm -hmm. And they didn't want them to get to India mm -hmm. up there. Hmm. They were trying to take supplies up there and we was trying to stop them. Okay. Okay. So you were uh, an infantryman at that point? Was uh, your mission pretty successful in stopping them? Yes. That's a pretty long walk. Yes, it was. How long did it take you? Oh, about four or five months. Really? Mm -hmm. Through all kinds of uh, terrain? Yes. What was the hardest part? Well, at night when the mules would slip and fall down off of the mountain. Oh, dear. And 
then we would have to go down over and get them, and get their packs and get the equipment that was on them and bring mm -hmm. it back up. Oh. Then who carries the equipment? The mules. We'd saddle them up and put their equipment back on them. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Um, so you got malaria when you were over, over there? Yes. Do you remember uh, any amusing incidents that, uh, during your stay in either China or Burma? Well, I heard one that... Now, this is another thing that I didn't witness, witness myself, but mm -hmm. what I've heard about. They was bringing Chinese from China over into India to train them. Mm -hmm. And they would put uh, 42, 44, 45 Chinese on a plane. And when they got to, over to <coughs> China with the, or into India with the Chinese, there would always be three or four missing. So they decided to put somebody on there and see what's, what was going on. Mm -hmm. Well, they went on and well, they'd be flying along and the door would be open. One of the Chinese would go to the door and he'd look out the door and another Chinese would come up behind him and put his foot against him, his butt and give him a push. Push him out of the airplane. And they'd all laugh like crazy. That's quite a story. That was their idea of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, but you never witnessed that? No, I never saw it. Um, any other... Uh, I counted the Chinese and I know we was getting less over in uh, India than they put on the plane in China. Okay. But I didn't know what was happening to them. Okay. Till they put some people on to do, observe and see what was going on. Okay. Hmm. So you solved that. <laughs> you solved that problem. Yes. Okay. What was the toughest part of being over there? I think the weather. The weather. Mm -hmm. It just didn't let up. Get in, we got into the monsoons in India and it was continued in Burma. Mm -hmm. We just wet all the time. Yeah. What did you have to worry about the most? Getting shot. Okay. The um, and uh, after you got let's see, you came back into Burma, right? Mm -hmm. And what happened? Where were you uh, when the war had? Ended. We was in China. You were in China. Mm -hmm. How did the news get to you? Do you remember? Somebody come out in our main camp and told us about it. Oh. Well, we heard one day that they dropped the atomic bomb, and then the next day they come out and they told us the war was all over. They was going to take us back down to Kunming, was which was our main camp. Okay. They didn't make you walk, did they? No. Okay. Went by truck. All right. I bet you're pretty happy. Yes. Uh, where did you go from Kunming? Went back into India. Okay. Went to the camp, a camp by the name of Paradoba. It was an airport base that they built a runway to, for B-29s to take off. Oh. Now did you... Um, do you have enough points to get out at that point? No. No. So what did you have to do? Well, when we was in Calcutta, I forget how many points I had, but you get so many for so many years overseas and so many years in the service. Mm -hmm. And you just have to wait till your turn comes up so you can get on a ship to come home. So your turn finally came up, mm -hmm. and um, you took a ship back? Yes. We got on a ship at Calcutta. Okay. How are you feeling at that point? Pretty happy. Pretty happy? Physically, how were you? Well, I was all right at that time. Okay. Uh, malaria wasn't bothering you? No. It was after I got back home that it became to recur on me. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Now, where were you discharged? 
Mendian Town Gap, Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, I bet you were really happy to get home. Yes, I was. And what did you do um, when you got home? Did you go right to work or? No. Chase girls, I guess. <laughs> it didn't No. And I knew my wife before I went over there. Uh huh. I knew at that time I was going to marry her. And I come back and I went, she was living in Niagara Falls and I went up to see her. And then we got married. Oh. What year? 1947. Okay. And uh, so you stayed in Niagara Falls? No. No? We stayed in Pennsylvania. Okay. And then um, what did you do for a living? Many things. Many things? I worked in the woods with horses. Mm -hmm. I worked in Du Bois at a plant for a while. So you kept busy? Mm -hmm. What did you finally end up doing? Finally wound up coming back up to Niagara Falls. Mm -hmm. And uh, where did you work when you were up here? Well, I started to work with a little plant they called Isco. I worked there for 25 years. Wow. And they, I went in one day and there was a notice in the bulletin board, we're going to demolish this plant as of such a date you'll no longer have employment here. That was the first anybody knew about it? Yeah. When I was 49 years old and it was devastating at that time. I'm sure. Well, I had no doubt, but I'd just work there until I was ready to retire. Yeah. What were you able to do? I got a job with Occidental Petroleum. Mm-hmm. What kind of work were you doing? I usually worked in boiler plant. Okay. Steam plant or power plant. Mm-hmm. And uh, how long uh, were you with Occidental? Oh, right around 20 years. Oh. And so you retired from them? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Very good. What, um, how would you summarize your military experience? What were your general feelings about it? You might think this is funny, but I enjoyed it. Well, you're not the first person to say that. I enjoyed the discipline. Mm -hmm. Organization. Made a lot of friends? Yes. It was a good platoon? Yes. Do you still keep in touch with any of the guys? No. No? It's funny, I never did. And one of them lives not far down in, uh, in Batavia. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And I used to go down there all the time and I never looked them up. Hmm. Oh. Well, we'd like to thank you very much. Well, you're very welcome. You know, it, was, uh, it was worth it just for the airplane story. <laughs> oh, poor guys. It's hard, it's hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah, what uh, a different uh, concept of life, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Amazing. Well, I, um, I'll get back to you on the 97th Infantry, where they went. Because okay. we've got a large book which tells you about where units went during World I've War I've always II. been interested in that because when I left them in Fort uh, Leonard Wood in Missouri, mm -hmm. I never knew what happened to them. Okay. I had a lot of friends in that division. Okay. And I'll see if there's even a, uh, a, there may be a veterans group. And we'll let you know if I can find one of those. Okay, I appreciate that. Uh, my pleasure. We're going. Uh, Mars, what task force? Mars. Okay, go. The Mars task force, what was that all about? Well, after uh, we went into Michinaw, we went into camp north of Michinaw mm -hmm. along the Irrawaddy River. And uh, it was a tent city. Mm -hmm. They called it Camp Lewis.
and this man by the name of Lewis was the first man that was killed in Michinaw. Okay. So they called it Camp Lewis. Mm -hmm. and we stayed there for quite a spell. And then they changed their outfit over to Mars Task Force. Call it Mars Task Force. Mm -hmm. And we was the ones that went over the mountains down to Lido. Hmm. Who named it the Mars Task Force? I don't know. Okay. But we had a Colonel Hunter who was in charge of us mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. Was he a pretty good guy? Yes, he was. Good soldier? Mm -hmm. You have to worry about leeches? Yes. What, what, uh, what was that like? Well, they'd be along the trails mm -hmm. and sticking up, just wiggling. And uh, they'd get on you. And at night we'd look at each other and see if we had any leeches on us. Hmm. And if we did, we'd just take a cigarette and just touch them and they'd fall right off then. Oh. <coughs> so this was a constant thing? Yes. And it was all up and down the mule's legs, the, the leeches. Mm-hmm. And you'd also, you'd get, take them off the mules also with the cigarettes? Yes. Okay. Now what, what was the job of the Mars Task Force? What was their mission? Well, this was a mission I told you about, stop uh, material okay. supplies from going up the Lido Road to North Burma. Okay. Okay, so that was, you were in constant contact with the Japanese at that point? Yes. What kind of shape were they in at that juncture? The what? The Japanese. Not very good shape. Not very good shape? No. Okay. Um, how long was this task force in existence? Oh, probably a year. About a year? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, were you doing communications for the task force? Yes. Okay, it was radio communications. Mm -hmm. And um, did you say you had some of that? No, we don't. I still remember it. Um, the International Morse Code. No, I. I have a hard time with my telephone number. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> I'm going to get into Morse code. Um, so this is the uh, Mars Task Force. Uh, yes. Patch. Let yes. me zip, let me zoom in on that, Mike. Now, when did you get this? The when, patch. When they formed the Mars Mars Task Force. Okay. So these patches were made uh, in country. Yes. Hmm. Mostly in India. We Okay, in India. Calcutta. Okay. That one of the CBI got it in India. Okay. In Calcutta. So these were, oh, it's interesting. It's so like they used newspaper for backing. For a stiffener, yeah. Oh. So these were made locally. Yes. Hmm. So uh, not a lot of guys wore those. No. And uh, what shoulder did you use to wear? What? Do you remember what shoulder those are on? Okay. On the right shoulder? In fact, I've never seen another one of those Mars Task Force. Oh, yeah. and, except on the, my buddies that had them when I was in there. Okay. Well, this is a great addition to the collection. Thank you. Okay. Um, a lot of people never heard about that Mars Task Force. No, I haven't. And we got the presidential citation. Sure. For the unit? Mm -hmm. Now, what unit got that? The, the Merrill's Marauders. Merrill's Marauders? Mm hmm Okay. Now, were you part of that group for a while? Yes, for a while. Okay. Did you ever get to meet him? No. What I was am. I was awarded the Bronze Star. Oh, how did you win that? Well, one day the Japanese was firing artillery in our, our unit. Mm-hmm. And I was up on top of the hill, and I took my radio and went up, went up on top of the hill, and I was directing our, our artillery. We had our, had our artillery also. Okay. And I was directing our artillery. Oh, very good. Where to shoot. So you, um, <clears throat> you were pretty successful in suppressing the Japanese fire? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, that's nice. Bet you're pretty proud of the Bronze Star. Yes, I am. Well, good. You should be. You got enough? Uh, any other citations? 
Well, of course, a good conduct medal. Everybody about got a good conduct medal. Well, that's very nice. Very nice. Any other stories you can think about? I'll think of a hundred after you leave. <laughs> well, we'll have to get your wife to have a tape recorder, and you can just tape record it. My uh, son-in-law, which is a history professor, he said, Jerry, he says, you should write a book. Well, that's not a bad idea. Or just talk, as I say, just talk into an inexpensive tape recorder. And his brother, he keeps sending, he's writing a book on uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan. Uh -huh. He spent five years over there. Oh. He's a multilinguist. Okay. Jerry, you're tired. He, he was in Russia five years. Well, yeah, we'd like to thank you very much. You're very welcome. It was for us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.